Well, welcome back, my friends, to another rousing rendition. Guys, this one uh, breaks my heart. This is a Buck Special Edition. It was sent to me for review by JR. Now, let me say this. I like Buck Knives. Always have. I am a big fan of Paul Boss Heat Treat. Always have been. This channel doesn't engage in negativity for clicks and views. But if something happens, we're going to show it. And it happened. Now, this happened while I was batoning. Everything I do, JR sent me this knife and I've already reached out to him. And here's the thing. I really feel like it's important to show this video. Um, not for negativity's sake. But I want to get your take on it. And I want to say this again. Let me say this to two, two different groups. One, to the buck haters. Guys, look. I don't like negativity. We don't have... It's rare, if ever, this happens on my channel. Over 6,000 videos, over 4,000 hard-use videos, maybe twice, three times. So this isn't something we do. There's no need to celebrate in this. It happened. Personally, I believe it's a one-off. The other group's the Buck fanboys. Guys, I just don't want to hear it. I'm already aggravated. And let me tell you why. Every knife that I do, I, it, my goal is not to break a knife. If I want to break a knife, I'll break every damn knife I got. That's not hard to do, right? I think there are channels that do that, and they do that well, and there is value there. I do believe that. It's not what we do. What we do is we take a knife out, and we see the function of that knife, and I pride myself on doing that. So when a knife breaks, I take it incredibly, incredibly personal. I want you to watch the footage. I'm going to narrate it like I normally would, and I'll join you here at the end. Having said that, help me out with this thing. Let's take a look. Well, thank you, Scab. Guys, I got to tell you, I, I got to be real honest right here. I pride myself on a couple things. One is giving you the best look at a knife I can. The second is being passionate and energy. And dude, this thing just killed me. Let's talk about it, though. Let's talk about it in real time. I don't know this model number. It is a Buck Special Edition. It is an S35 uh, mm -hmm. VN. It weighs 6.5 ounces. It has micarta handle scales. Now, it says green micarta, and what I'm th this is actually brown micarta, and I believe it's polished. Um, I believe it's a hidden tang or a stick tang. I'm not 100% sure. I do know this. It came razor sharp. Now, there we're doing the drop test. We're doing the throw it at the stump test, that kind of thing. I don't know for 100%. I do believe it's hollow ground, which makes it slicey as hell, uh, but not really conducive to hard use. Now, let me, let me read what they have on the website about this knife. This fixed blade knife is an excellent all-around hunting or camp knife. The wide drop point stainless steel blade is shaped for easy skinning and caping. Now, you're going to see in this video how sharp this sumbitch is. And skinning and caping, I think, is easily done. But then it says, but it also easily tackles other chores. Blade length is four and a quarter. Overall length is eight and a half. Weight is 6.3 ounces. Now, the blade thickness is 0 0.140 or 4 millimeters thick. Um, it's made in the USA. The sheath is black leather, gorgeous made in Mexico. I love Mexican leather. Listen, honestly, honest to God, in hand, this thing feels amazing. It has an excellent balance point. It's razor sharp. Now, here's the thing. The inner grip on this knife, the inner grip where your knuckles rest is right at four inches. So 99% of the world's hands can hold it. It feels good. It contours. It has just a slight palm swell. It is an enclosed tang, like I said, so I can't see if it's a stick tang or not. It has a nice guard. Uh, it does have the Paul Boss heat treat. Everything about this knife screams at me. And I love it. Here we're doing some stabbing. What do we get from the stabbing? Well, 
we get knife control. It puts a little pressure on the tip. Uh, I've got no slippage. And the beautiful thing is the grip that I took, you, you can see me there manipulating it in a couple of different ways. I tried to orient the blade several different rate, ways. This thing did phenomenally well on everything. Here we're going to do, uh, we're just doing, actually what we're doing is part of a little tri-stick, just some fine work. And here's the deal, guys. This entire week, I'm, I've done six uh, different USA-made camping slash hunting slash bushcraft knives. We did the exact same sequence on every single knife. I did that for a reason so we could do some comparisons. We started it off last night with a knife that did very, very, very well. And we followed it up today. And again, guys, this thing just kind of, when this happens again, I take it somewhat personally because I pride myself on using a knife. And this felt very, very, very much like a good usable knife. Okay. Do I still believe that? Yeah, sure do. Um, I'm hoping this was a one-off, but here's the thing about Buck. I am, I like Buck. I, I have a Buck 110 that I carry quite frequently. I have a Buck 119 that I have literally beat the dog shit out of for the past 25 years. That leads me to believe that what happened and what we're going to see in this video is a one-off. Now, if you feel that it's my fault, put in the comments. I'm thick-skinned. I'm a big boy. I can take it. But I can tell you that I did not set out to break the knife. I never have. I never will. Now, this is reinforced sandblast hose. And, and this is the one thing that I didn't do on every knife, but I did it on this knife because this damn thing is sharp as shit, son. I mean, it just blew through everything. Maybe that was my fault. I got a little too carried away, too overconfident. But the truth is this, and I'll say this here and I'll say it now. I have changed my tact from the time I started this channel to now. We've gone from more just a lot of chopping and crazy stuff and borderline abuse to actual use and actual showing the knife and actually trying to build a skill set. I am a fan of buck knives. I'll say that for the last time here. But let me say this too. Every knife company is going to have a failure. I believe that strongly. If this knife helps in some way, or this video helps in some way, I hope that it does. I want you to understand this about old scab. I don't want to see anybody suffer. I don't want to see any company suffer. I am an American worker. I pride myself on that. And I understand it's more than just, you know, one entity. There's a lot of people that work here. Now, we're going to start this, this whole thing off. And this is the clip where it, it breaks. But I want y'all to look at the bottom. I am batoning pine, a pressure-treated pine. And I want you to look right there at the bottom. You see that knot? All right, now I want you to watch where I stop intentionally here, okay? And this is also considered soft pine, okay? White pine, whatever. Now you see right here, I'm going to, I get to, I stop. I stop two inches on top of it. And the reason that I'm doing this, the reason that I was going to explain to you guys this particular way of doing it was this, if I got stuck in the woods overnight, man, I got to start me a fire. Maybe it ain't a survival situation. Maybe it's, hey, I got some water. I got some snacks. It's just too damn late in the day. I'm going to set me a diamond up off a tree. I'm going to build me a little fire. I'm going to sleep through the night, get up early. Well, if that's the case, I'm not going to just go crazy and start slamming my knife through everything. This is my cutting tool. This is a tool that I'm going to cut my food up with. This is a, a tool that I'm going to process game with. So I'm not going to destroy it, but I want to make me a little tender. I want to make me a little kindling. I want to get me a strong base for my fire. Maybe I'm going to cook. So I'm going to baton some smaller stuff down, right? That's what I'm going to do. That's what I would do. Now, this is the piece that breaks on. This piece actually was cracked. Now, right here, there was a slight knot and I was trying to go around it and right there, it's gone. So tell me in the comments, and, and listen, I, I can't make anybody believe anything. I don't try. Two things I'll tell everybody. I'm not here to convince you shit, and I'm not here to say you shit. 
That's all that happened. Let me know. We're going to go back to me at the kitchen table. Scab, take it away. Guys, join me in the con comments. Well, we're back. What did you think? Personally, I don't think that was enough for the knife to break. So what 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 is it then? Well, there there's batoning is such a controversial thing, but I've really changed the way that I baton. Um, I don't go after the big, huge stuff. It, typically, and I believe I might even said this in the video, if I'm going to do any batoning, it's going to be for kindling or tinder, right? I don't think this should have failed the way it failed. Do I think there is a quality issue with buck? No. I think this is a one-off or that's the way I'd like to do it. Or maybe it was me. I, it did go down into a knot. I did think that the, the, the wood was already split and I was going to address that. And you've seen the, the piece of wood before. I avoided the knot. Not again to avoid breaking a knife or not to be deceptive. But if I was in a survival situation, I'm not going to go crazy with my cutting tool. It is imperative. And beyond that, even if it's not a survival, say you're stuck in the woods overnight. This happens thousands of times every year to hunters and hikers and outdoors people. They get out, they're too long, and they stay out there. And so you want to build a fire. You get your stuff. You do some light batoning, one, to pass the time. Two, if it's rained, if you're stuck because of the rain, you want to get down to some drier wood. A knife should be able to hold up to pine. I think it's a one-off. I hate that it happened. Put in the comments what you think. Having said that, man, I love y'all. God knows I do. God bless y'all. I hope he does. Listen, there's three things. I have three causes. The first is this. There was a time in this country where 22 bets a day took their own lives. Now, stats are everywhere. The real number is between 15 and 29. That's why here on this channel, we focus on the number zero. Anything over zero is simply unacceptable. And all that means in this world is this, vets, we love you. You have a place here. I back the blue. It's not popular and I'm okay with that. My kid's a cop over in Alabama and the whole back the blue before it happens to you, blah, blah, blah. It's happened to me way more than it'll ever happen to you. I have my reasons. I don't shove them down your throat. These are just my causes. Finally, finally, if you are an addict and I am, and I have never once hid that, never quit quitting. Well, I love y'all put in the comments what you think. I'm scab. You're not. This one broke my heart. I'm gone, son.